How are you? Okay. I am okay. Yes, good. good. We are doing good. Okay, so we will begin. Yes. Namma jnana timarandasya jnana shalakaya chaksurun militanena tasmai shri gurave namaha Nama om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Dejatarine Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu pai eva cha patitanam pavan hebhyo vishna vibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Would you like to share the screen with me, Archana? Yes. And then I'll put the book on for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. <coughs> So we're on mantra number six tonight. We're going through the Ishopanishad mantras. So this evening we're on mantra number six. Yastu Sarvani Bhutani Atmani Evanupashyati Sarva Bhuteshu Chatmanam Tatuna Vidya Gupsate. He who systematically sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord, who sees all living entities as his parts and parcels, and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anything or any being. Uh. So Srila Prabhupada's purport begins that he said this is a description of a Mahabhagavad, meaning a great a great devotee who sees everything in relation to to Krishna. Then Srila Prabhupada explains to us there are three different stages to understand the Supreme. So the first stage is called the Kanista devotee. It means that he is the, 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 in the lowest stage. Yeah, if we, if we describe someone as Kanista, it means he's not very much elevated. He's still somewhat materially attached. So the Kanista, he will go to the temple or the church or the mosque according to his religious faith. And he worships, he does his duties when he goes there, he does his religious practices, everything based according to scriptures. 
แล้วเขาก็จะปฏิบัติตามคำสอนของพระเวทที่ได้บอกไว้ so somebody who is on a canista platform they consider that God is only in the place of worship and he's not outside บุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับคานิสตาดิการีเนี่ยเขาจะคิดว่าพระเจ้าเนี่ยทรงจะอยู่ในรูปของพระปฏิมาแล้วก็แต่ว่าจะไม่อยู่ทุกที่อ่ะแต่ว่าจะอยู่ในรูปอยู่ในรูปของพระปฏิมามีไว้ให้บูชา so they also they're not able to understand the difference between different levels of devotees or uh, religious people แล้วเขาก็จะไม่มีความเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับบุคคลต่างระดับหรือว่าสาวกก็จะมีแบบตามตามระดับอะไรอย่างนี้แล้วเขาเขาจะไม่มีเข้าใจเขาจะไม่เข้าใจสนุน and they cannot understand that somebody may be a great devotee and they may have understood God they may have actually come to know God So such a devotee like that, uh, they will follow all the rules and regulations. Uh, but sometimes they quarrel with each other, or they quarrel with other devotees. Uh, they think one devotee, they think that one devotee may, is better than another. So these kind of devotees, Kanishta devotees, they're materialistic devotees. So they're still trying to get free from the material energy to come to the transcendental level. They're not yet on the transcendental platform. But there are other devotees on the second level. They're called the Madhyama devotees, like the intermediate devotees. So the nature of this devotee who's on the intermediate level, they see four different kinds of people, different levels, different people. First of all, they will see the Supreme Lord. They will see the Lord, and they will offer all their worship to the Supreme Lord. And then they will see that there's also the devotees of the Lord, and they will associate with the devotees of the Lord, take advantage of their association. And then the third level is the people who are innocent, the people they don't know anything, they're new people. And so the, the the one who's on the intermediate level, he'll be merciful to them, he'll be kind to them, and encourage them, and try to help them. And then the, there's the, the fourth level, they're, they're the people who are atheists, or they're blasphemers, or they're, uh, you know, they have no devotion, no faith, and so they, they will, uh, one who is an intermediate devotee, he will avoid these people. Yeah, the, the atheists, uh, the atheists, these demons, they hate devotees, they really hate devotees. So the devotee will stay away from them and avoid them. And 
So we have to understand how to deal with all these different classes of people. Just like when we go to the temple, we will offer our obeisances, we will offer our prayers and worship to the Supreme Lord. And we will want to try to develop our love for the Lord in His different forms as a deity. And then we will want to make friends with the people who are devotees. That's important to keep friendly relationships with devotees. And try to awaken love of God in the innocent people. Yeah, like new people come to the temple or you meet some people who are interested, they want to ask questions. So we should try to help them and try to encourage them to take up Krishna consciousness. But there are certain kinds of people, like we call atheists or demons, and we'll be very careful to avoid these people. Yeah, because if we try to confront them, if we try to approach them, they'll become more offensive, and that's not good. So we have to know how to deal with different people. Uh -huh. Okay, and then above there's a person, the class, so we've spoken about the Kanista on the bottom level and then the Madhyam on the intermediate level and then there's a person above that, there's the Uttama devotee on the topmost level. And that person is that, he's the one who's described in this mantra. Right? So he sees the Supreme Lord in everything. And he sees all living entities as parts and parcels of the Lord. And he never hates anything or any being. Just like somebody may be an atheist, he may be a demon, so he won't hate that person. Because he knows, although that person's a demon and an atheist, he's also a spirit soul, he's also part and parcel of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So the Uttama Adhikari he sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord. So, so he doesn't make any difference. He doesn't see any difference between the atheist and the theist. But at the same time, <laughs> he's careful. 
ขาเนี่ยท่านเนี่ยจะไม่เห็นความแตกต่างระหว่างผู้ที่ไม่เชื่อในพระเจ้ากับผู้ที่เชื่อในพระเจ้าแต่ว่าท่านก็มีความระมัดระวัง He knows there's no difference between the atheist and the theist. They're both spirit souls. Prabhupada gives the example. He said, just like there may be a brahmana and a dog in the street, a street dog. So the uttama adhikari, the uttama the devotee, topmost devotee. He doesn't see any difference between the brahmana and the dog in the street, because both of them are part and parcel of the supreme Lord Krishna. ตัวอย่างที่ศิลปราบานให้บอกว่าสาวกที่อยู่ในระดับอุตมาดิการีเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยจะไม่เห็นข้อแตกต่างเลยแล้วว่าไม่ว่าจะเป็นคนเดินอยู่บนถนนสุนัขเดินอยู่หรือว่าอะไรเนี่ยเขาจะไม่เห็นความแตกต่างเลยเพราะว่าอะไรเพราะว่ามุมมองของเขาเนี่ยเขามองจะ But they've they've got different karma. Someone's got the karma to get the body of a brahmana, and someone's in the karma to get the body of a dog. It's due to their previous lives. The Brahmana, he did not misuse his independence. But the soul in the dog. That's the soul which did misuse his independence, and therefore he was punished and he was put in the body of a dog. So, so the uttama, the one who's on the topmost level, he will think how to do good for both of them. So he doesn't get put off. He's not disturbed because they're in different bodies, but he understands there's a spirit soul within both these bodies. Just like we could say that there's a tiger, a tiger, a tiger also has a soul, but it doesn't mean you can deal with the tiger the same way you would deal with a person. So we have to know how to deal with all these different living entities. So sometimes some people may try to imitate the devotee on the topmost level. They try to imitate an uttama devotee. And they talk about everything being oneness, and we're all one, and there's no difference. We're all souls. But at the same time, they may behave on the bodily platform. So we have to learn what it means to see everyone equally. What, how to actually see all the living entities equally. We have. We have to learn from a real uttama devotee, not just from somebody who's pretending to be an uttama devotee.
Archana. 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 Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, we are not able to hear our Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm wondering what happened to her. Where did she go? Hare, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. What's going on? Where did you go? Oh, my internet, Guru Maharaj. Every time it's happened like this. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, oh. Guru. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, we have to learn from a real devotee, not from somebody who's just pretending to be a big devotee. So, Prabhupada said, in this six mantra, this is mantra number six, so it mentions that we should, one should observe or systematically see. And Prabhupada said we have to follow the acharyas, the teachers, the perfect teachers. And so the Sanskrit word to follow is anupashyati. Anu means to follow and pashyati means to observe. Anu means patibatta, pashyati, maitinkan sanke. So Prabhupada then says, this means we shouldn't just depend on our eyes, but we should follow the acharyas. Yeah, our eyes are not perfect. We don't see properly with our eyes. But when we hear from us, from the proper source, when we hear from the Vedic wisdom, then that is proper knowledge. The Vedic knowledge comes from the Lord Himself and it comes through the disciplic succession. So it comes from Krishna to Brahma to Narada and then to Vyasa and then Vyasa has many disciples. So the system was people would go to the Guru, they would stay in the ashram and they would hear from the Gurus and they wouldn't, they wouldn't have to write anything, they would just hear and they would remember. So people in the past, they were much more intelligent than what they are now. Mm. We have very poor memories. You can see. So we, we depend on so many things. We write things down and we have computers and we have phones and uh, there's so many, we, we don't memor, memorize things. We depend on technology to remember everything. 
พราะฉะนั้นเราจะไม่มีความจําอะไรเลยเราจะความจําสมัยนี้เรามีโทรศัพท์มือถือที่จําให้เราทุกอย่างมีคอมพิวเตอร์จําให้เราทุกอย่างเราแทบจะไม่ต้องจําอะไรด้วยสมองของเราแล้ว But previously, before the Kali Yuga, before this age, people had very good memories and were very intelligent, and they would hear from the guru and remember. So then, s h i l a p r a b h u p a d talks about the situation at present. He said, at present. Many people write commentaries on scriptures. But they they write their commentaries, but they don't write them according to the disciplic succession. Right. The, The Vedic knowledge was compiled by s r i l a v y a s a d e v He put it into writing, and he compiled books like the b a g He wrote the Mahabharata, from where the Bhagavad Gita is. And s h i l a v y a s a d e v summarized the Vedas in the book called the Vedanta Sutra. And then he wrote a commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, which was Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada says. The Srimad Bhagavatam was the most perfect and sublime book written by Vyasa Dev. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasa Dev has written. Nigama kalpa taror galatam palam shukamukad amrita dravatam yatam pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam mahuraho rashika puvi bhavuka. That uh, he's saying that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of all of the Vedas. The Vedic knowledge is like a tree. บทมนต์ที่ท่านท่องไปเมื่อกี้นี้บอกว่าอบอกว่าบทมนต์พระเวทเนี่ยมันเหมือนต้นไม้แล้วก็สริมันบอกว่าตำเนี่ยมันเหมือนกับผลของต้นไม้นั่น yeah, The Vedas is like the tree and the s r i m a d Bhagavatam is the fruit of the tree and it's the fruit which is the most valuable part of the, any tree เพราะว่าคำพีพระเวทหรือความรู้พระเวทเนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับต้นไม้ซึ่งส่วนสำคัญของต้นไม้เนี่ยมันก็จะอยู่ที่ผลของมันเพราะฉะนั้นผลของต้นไม้แห่งพระเวทนี้ก็คือมาในรูปของสริมาบวกตัมนั่นเอง So the Srimad Bhagavatam was the, written by s h i l a v y a s a d e v in his maturity under instruction from Narada Muni s r i l a Vyasadeva had written many books. He had written the eighteen Puranas, six Puranas for each of the three modes: goodness, passion, and ignorance. Vyasadeva had written Puranas in all the modes: eight levels. In one, in one level, the level of good. But although he, although he had written 18 books and then he had written the Mahabharat, which is a very big book with many many verses, and within the Mahabharat was the Bhagavad Gita, but still he didn't feel satisfied. He felt he d not really done enough. <laughs> Mahabharat, 
So, you know, you write a book, you feel very good, you know, I wrote a book, you feel very happy. But Srila Vyasadeva wrote many books, but he didn't feel satisfied. Then Narada Muni told him, he said, the reason why you're not satisfied is because you did not glorify the process of devotional service. So then Srila Vyasadeva wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. And then Srimad Bhagavatam he glorified the process of devotional service. All right, so uh, Srila Prabhupada explains that uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita, they're the most important scriptures. Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita are the most important scriptures. And Prabhupada said all the scriptures, they actually agree with each other. The Upanishads, the Vedanta Sutra, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, said they all have the same conclusion. So we, we want to understand these scriptures, we want to, un we want to understand these scriptures, we have to hear them from Srila Vyasadeva or some representative of Srila Vyasadeva. If we try to understand them without the help of the disciplic succession, then we will never understand them properly. <laughs> Prabhupada gives an example. He said, just like there was this one man, he wrote a book and he called the book Shah Jahan. And Shah Jahan was actually the father of Aurangzeb. So Shah Jahan, he was a king and he had a son who was Aurangzeb. His son was a very demonic person. So Aurangzeb what happened was he put his father in the prison and Aurangzeb became the ruler and he went and he, he did a lot of terrible things. So one man wrote a book and he called his book Shah Jahan but some, one other person read the book and he said, you know, I read your book, but it's all about Aurangzeb, but you called the book Shah Jahan. Why did you call the book Shah Jahan when the book is all about Aurangzeb? <laughs> So the man, the man explained, he said, Yes, I called the book Shah Jahan because I was describing the feelings of the father. Because the father was put in jail by the son, and he was hearing all the news about the atrocities performed by his son. 
ฉันน่ะให้ชื่อพ่อเขาเพราะว่าฉันน่ะเขียนในอารมณ์ของพ่อเขาอยู่ว่าพ่อเขาเนี่ยรู้สึกยังไงตอนนี้ลูกแต่เขาทำยังไง So the man said, "I want, I want, I was describing the feelings of the father. Although the book is about the activities of the son, but I was describing the emotional feelings of the father." So in the same way, s h r i l a v y a s a d e v Wrote these books. He wrote the Vedas. He wrote Vedanta Sutra. He wrote these things. He understands them. If you want to understand them, you have to hear them from him or from his representative. So. If you don't hear from his representative, then you will not understand correctly. So then, p r a b h u p a d finishes here with the purport to this mantra. He said that in order to come to the topmost level, to the uttama level, you have to come to the platform. Of Brahma Buddha, you have to come become a liberated soul. And if you actually come to that liberated platform, then you will see all living entities like your own brothers or sisters. So sometimes politicians may talk about this about brotherhood and seeing everybody equal, but that is not real spiritual vision. บางครั้งเนี่ยก็จะมีนักการเมืองเนี่ยก็จะมาสอนให้มีวิสัยทัศน์เช่นนี้ว่ามองทุกคนให้เป็นพี่น้องอะไรอย่างนี้แต่ว่ามันมันไม่ใช่มันไม่ใช่จริงอะไรครับแต่คือ because these people politicians and so on they're on the material platform they're on the platform of the body they're not thinking about the soul they're just thinking about the body เราว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยยังอยู่ในระดับร่างวัตถุอยู่เพราะฉะนั้นเขาไม่ได้คิดอะไรเขาไม่ได้คิดถึงดวงยาเขาคิดถึงแค่ร่างวัตถุนี้เท่านั้น So these people don't know about the spiritual world เพราะฉะนั้นแล้วพวกนี้คือเขาไม่รู้เกี่ยวกับโลกผิด But the real u t t a m a devotee he sees the spirit soul within the body and he knows how to deal with the soul Okay, we're going to go on to mantra seven. Yes, min sarvani bhutani atma eva bhutvajana taha tatrako mohaka shoka ekadvam anupashyata. One who always sees all living entities as spiritual sparks, in quality one with the Lord, becomes a true knower of things. What what then can be illusion or anxiety for him? ผู้ที่เห็นสิ่งมีชีวิตทั้งหมดว่าเป็นละอองวิญญาณที่มีคุณสมบัติเป็นหนึ่งเดียวกับองค์พระขวานเสมอเป็นผู้ที่รู้สิ่งต่างๆตา,ามความเป็นจริงเช่นนี้จะมีความหลงหรือความวิตกกังวลสำหรับเขาได้อย่างไร So Prabhupada explains to actually understand the spiritual position of a person, you have to be either a madhyam or an uttama devotee. บอกว่าเซวานก็สอนอธิบายบอกว่าที่เราจะสามารถสามารถเข้าใจ
ผู้คงบุคคลได้จริงๆเนี่ยอย่างน้อยเราจะต้องอยู่ในระดับมัตยมาติการีหรืออุตมาติการี We are all one in quality with the Supreme Lord. So Prabhupada gives an example. He said, just like sparks of a fire, they are one in quality with the fire, but the spark and the fire are different in quantity. The same in quality, but different in quality. Quantity. Right. So the the quantity of heat and light in the spark cannot equal the fire. ปริมาณของสเก็ตไฟเนี่ยที่ออกมาจากกองไฟเนี่ยมันจะไม่มีวันเทียบเท่ากับปริมาณของกองไฟได้ But the quality of heat and light in the spark is the same as the fire แต่ว่าคุณสมบัติเนี่ยก็เป็นสเก็ตไฟก็มีคุณสมบัติเหมือนกันกับกองไฟ So the same way the the big devotees the top devotees they able they they can see the set They can see everything as the energy of Krishna. And there's no difference between the energy and the energetic. So and the energetic means the possessor of the energy. There's no difference between Krishna and Krishna's energy. They're the same because they're absolute. Just like there's no difference between the heat and light and fire. You cannot have a fire without having heat and light. So heat, light, and fire are actually like the same thing. And here again, you have the word anupashyataha. It says ekatvan anupashyataha. It means that one should see the unity of all living entities. Ekatvam anupashyataha. Do you see it, Archana? Um, ekatvam. Ekatvam. Oh yes, yes. Yes, Gurudev, I got it. Okay, mm -hmm. a custom. So we have to see everything. We have to see things with the help of the scriptures, not just with our eyes. Our eyes are not perfect, but the scriptures are perfect. So the spark of the sup of the of the of Krishna, oh, the spark of, there's a, the spiritual spark, uh, which is actually like Krishna's expansion. Uh, the, it, the, he has eighty, almost eighty percent of the qualities of the whole. Oh no no wait wait. The, the 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 living entities the, the living entities we're all spirit souls and we have we don't have all the qualities of krishna but we have almost we have like about 80% of his qualities mm -hmm. 
บอกว่าสิ่งมีปัจเจกละอองเนี่ยของส่วนสมบูรณ์ที่สูงสุดมีคุณสมบัติเกือบ 80% ของส่วนที่บริบูรณ์นั่นก็คือหมายถึงเรานั่นเองเรามี 80% so we're we're somewhat we're almost equal in qualities but we're very different in quantity Krishna has a lot of these quant of these qualities we only have them in small amounts We are tiny spirit souls. Mm. Prabhupada gives an example. He says, the quantity the quantity of salt in a drop of water. Is not equal to the quantity of salt in the ocean. But the salt which is in the drop is the same as the salt which is in the whole ocean. It's the same kind of salt. It's the same quality. But it's just a different quantity. So Prabhupada said, if we were equal in both quality and quantity to Krishna, then we wouldn't. Be falling under the influence of the material energy, we wouldn't fall into Maya. Yeah, we fall into Maya. Krishna doesn't fall into Maya. The Supreme Lord, He never gets in Maya. We get in Maya. So then, Prabhupada quotes the previous mantras. How we heard earlier, mantra four, it was describing that even the powerful demigods they cannot approach the supreme lord. So we should understand that we are not equal to the Supreme Lord in any respect. But they use the word ekatvam. Ekatvam means one. So we have to understand the meaning of this ekatvam. What is this oneness? And Prabhupada explains just like in the family, there's one interest. Everybody has a common interest. They're interested in the benefit of the family. Or in a country, the, the people of Thailand, they're interested in Thailand, the benefit of Thailand. And the people of China, they're interested in the benefit of China. So in that sense, they, they have a common interest. So even though there are many people, still they have something in common. They have the common interest. So in the same way, it's like one family. One family, they have the common interest, they're interested for the family. Uh, 
And so the interest of the individual and that of the of the Supreme Lord are the same. Because in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says he is the seed giving father of everyone. So Krishna is like our father. He's he's a, we're one family under him. So all all the living creatures, everyone, the, the birds and the and the fish and the trees, they're all part of the energy of Krishna and we're all they're all like our brothers and sisters. So there's, we all belong to the same family under the Supreme Lord, so we have the same interest. And nature of everyone is we all want to enjoy. And Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he also wants to enjoy. <laughs> so we engage in different activities to enjoy. And the same way, the problem is we're trying to find the enjoyment in the wrong way. We want to enjoy, but we try to find the enjoyment in the wrong way, doing the wrong things. So we have to learn that there is a material platform and there is a spiritual platform. So material platform you do things for the body, but spiritual platform is for the soul. Just like Lord Krishna, uh, the Supreme Lord, when he comes or when when he enjoys, he enjoys with all of his associates. So his enjoyment is not material; it's all spiritual. Yeah, it said that when when the Lord enjoys, he is acting on the nirguna platform. Nirguna means no material qualities. And so in the material world we see there's always fighting going on between people. They want to enjoy the different things and they argue with each other. Each person is thinking he is the center of enjoyment. I want this. And the other person says, no, I want that. And so there's argument and fighting. Someone says, this is mine. The other person says, no, it's mine. And they argue and fight. Like 
So Prabhupada said the center has to be Krishna and we all have to be servants of Krishna. So we're all meant to join with Krishna and to act in, in the interests of Krishna. We, if you have the same interest, then there'll be no argument. So the, this is the, the spiritual platform. And if we come to that platform, then we can find real happiness. We'll find there's real oneness there. There's no illusion, no lamentation. But if we have a society, if we have people without any God consciousness, then there will be problems. And people will always be full of anxiety if they don't have any Krishna consciousness, if they don't have any spiritual knowledge, then there will always be anxiety. So they, they know they can be crushed, they can be killed, they can give up everything at any moment. So the material nature is like that. It simply gives us so many problems, so much trouble. But if we surrender to Krishna, then we can cross over the, all the miseries of material life. So we have to bring God into all of our activities. There has to be the sense of God consciousness. Otherwise, there will just be problems. Should I keep going or will, will we stop and take questions? It's 8 o'clock, Guru Maharaj. I don't know that anyone have a question. Should we finish it? It's, uh, little to go. What to do? I don't know. Uh, Sarapunima, I have questions, Ramaj. Okay, so we'll take questions. Huh? Okay. Her question is the all the uh, Vedic scripture it's all the Vedic scripture in three modes of material nature is created by Vyasadev is written by him no, no, the Vedas come from the Supreme Lord. Right, there's two kinds of scriptures. There's the Shruti and the Smriti. 
So the four Vedas are Shruti. That means they come directly from the Supreme Lord. Yeah, and the, the Smriti is what is written by people like Vyasadev and other great souls. So, the Vedic knowledge, the original Vedas, they say, Tenhe Brahma Ridayi Adikavayi, was put into the heart of Lord Brahma. It was imparted into the heart of Lord Brahma from Lord Krishna himself. And then it was passed down, right? Krishna gave that knowledge to Brahma. Brahma gave it to. Uh, it went to um, Brahma to Narada, Narada to Vyasa. So Vyasa, he had the Vedas written down because he knew people in the Kali Yuga have bad memories. But previously it was just recited, it was all chanted, and only the Brahmanas could chant the Vedas. <laughs> Yes. So, some people, they only accept the Shruti, the Vedas, they don't accept the other knowledge. But we accept. They won't accept the Mahabharata, they won't accept Bhagavad Gita, they won't accept the Bhagavatam. They say, no, these are only written by men. But the Vedas, they come from God. So you have to understand there is a difference, you see. So sometimes you, pe you, you may talk to people, people like Gyanis or Vedantas, Vedantas, uh, like that, they will only accept the Shruti, they won't accept the Smriti. So sometimes we have to preach from the Vedas, you have to just you cannot use the Bhagavad Gita. You have to just preach from <laughs> books like this Ishopanishad. Just like we're, that's why we're reading this Ishopanishad, because this Ishopanishad, this is from the Vedas. <laughs> Our other books are not from the Shruti. The Aishopanishad is the only book we have which is from the Shruti. And sometimes when you quote, when you quote a scripture or a, a, a verse, you may have to give a verse which comes from the Vedas. You cannot give a verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. 
So sometimes these uh, Sanskrit professors and big scholars, you know, they may only follow the Shruti, they don't accept the Smriti. So Ishopanishad is a very important book to give them. Yes, it's described in the nectar of nectar of devotion that Rupa Goswami has listed qualities of Krishna, and he picked out sixty-four different qualities of Lord Krishna. Mm. Oh, that that also. Same that 64, we have some of that 64, Gomash. We have some, we have almost 80% of that 64. 64. There, oh. We have 50 out of 6. In, in our perfect stage, in our most perfect condition, we could have 50 of the 64 qualities. But we couldn't have the qualities in the same quantity as Krishna. คำถามนะคะถามถึงแปดสิบเปอร์เซ็นต์คุณสมบัติที่เราเกือบมีเท่ากับองค์พระขวานเนี่ยหมายถึงอะไรมันเยอะมากเลยอะไรบอกว่า
Yeah. Well, yeah. when you talk of mercy, what do they mean by mercy? What is mercy? Yeah, they don't kill other living entities. Maybe they take vegetarian food. Well, that is just simply non-violence. That's a sub-religious principle. It's not the highest principle of religion. Mm, yeah, you know, it's the mode of goodness, yeah. But you have to go higher than the mode of goodness. You have to go, you have to come to the platform of Brahman. So from the platform of Brahman, then you have to go on. First you have to come up to the level of Brahman to understand you're not the body, that we're spirit souls. And then we have to go on from there to understand our relation with the Supreme Lord. So will there be peace if we are just, if we are truthful and merciful? Oh, well, it may help, <laughs> but I don't know how long they'll be peaceful for. It's difficult for people to keep these qualities. That's a problem that they may talk about these things and they may try to keep these qualities for some time, but they have difficulty that they, because they're not, because they're not fixed in real devotion. So at any time, the mode of goodness can be overcome by passion and ignorance. There's always a competition between the modes. So sometimes goodness is prominent and sometimes it's conquered by passion and sometimes we're conquered by ignorance, right? We, we see, you know, we're trying to be the mode of goodness, but sometimes we get very passionate and sometimes we become influenced by the mode of ignorance even. That's the nature of the modes of nature. We have to really transcend the modes of nature. You have to come up to the stage of pure goodness. And to do that, you have to take up devotional service. Devotional service means hearing and chanting about the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, you simply be on the material platform. Yeah? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. So Shaya has a question. Shaya has a Shaya has a new fit, a new photo here. Could not recognize who is this woman. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, dan warta nam ki sakse mein hamko omise se or kore se sila pakwan. Um, atana hamar ki thi put the number percent na ha. Ah. Ki ne bi song sai wa yang Krishna mi 64 percent lao. ตรงไหนคือร้อยเปอร์เซ็นต์นะคะอ่าประมาณ 64% แต่เดี๋ยวหนูถามคุณมาแล้วใช่ her question is regarding the qualities of Krishna. Uh, 64 is the maximum. It's not is why it's not 100. No, well, Krishna has unlimited qualities. But Rupa Goswami selected 64. And he supported each of the, these qualities with evidence from scriptures. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Krishna has unlimited qualities. But Rupa Goswami wrote about six, 64 of them. And he's comparing them 
these qualities is showing us the relationship between Krishna and the living entities and Shiva and Vishnu. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Shanya. Yes, and then who else has a question? Komodaki has a question? Uh, yes, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, I wanted to know, um, we have the four sampradayas, right? And um, all the four sampradayas, did they get their um, teachings from Lord Brahma? I mean, did everything originate from Lord Brahma? I mean, the four sampradayas? That's my first question. No. Our, we're the Brahma Sampradaya, but there's the other, there's one is from Lakshmi, and then one is from the four Kumaras, and one is from Lord Shiva. Uh, that means Krishna directly uh, instructed the head of the Sampradayas, is it? Well, uh, how does Lakshmi, they may get from Vishnu, they may also get from Vishnu, I'm not sure. Actually, I never really investigated that. But uh, they could get from Vishnu, they could get from other source. But it's like that, that we have the Sri Sampradaya, Lakshmi. Of course, she is the consort of Lord Narayan. The four Kumaras, they're devotees of... Uh, the four Kumaras, they were devotees of Lord Shiva and they got the, the no, Nambarka Sampradaya. Yeah. The four Kumaras, they went to the spiritual world and they met Lord Narayan. How did they get their knowledge? Not sure. <laughs> But, I was just wondering because Srimad Bhagavatam, the first sloka says that, um, I mean, the, the knowledge was first imparted to Lord Brahma, right? Yes, so, that's an our line. Yeah, the Vedic, the Vedas, the Vedas were imparted to Lord Brahma. That's the Vedas, the four Vedas, right. the Vedic knowledge. So, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says to Arjuna, rise above the Vedas. The Vedas deal with the subject matter of the three modes of nature. So Krishna says, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, nice Trigunya Bhavarjuna, rise above the modes of nature. Because the Vedas are dealing knowledge, is knowledge for this world. The Vedas is not speaking much about devotion. It's difficult to know the absolute truth from the Vedas. The Vedas is more about how to live in this world and to how to get economic development, sense gratification and liberation. Vedas is dealing more in these things. And in Brahma Samhita it says it's very difficult to know Krishna from the Vedas. But it's very easy to know him by devotion. Mm -hmm. and it, uh, it says, uh, 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 how does it go? That Advaitam Achutam Anadim Anantarupam Adyam Purana Purusham Yavanovanamcha Vedeshu Durlabam Adurlabam Atmabhaktu Vedeshu Durlabam Very difficult to know from the Vedas. But adurlabham atmabhato is very easy by devotion, by the devotees, from the devotees, to know Krishna, to know Govinda, the Supreme Lord. So the Vedas doesn't uh, give so much about the highest spiritual teachings. It, it's concealed there in the Vedas. It's there, but it's very little. It's much more, the Vedas deal much more with material things. Working in this world and 
how to properly organize this world, how to live here nicely, how to enjoy life and get success at the end. And for that success at the end is, you know, as uh, liberation, mukti. And so that's about as far as the Vedas go. So that was why Narada Muni wanted Vyasadeva to write Srimad Bhagavatam, to properly glorify devotion, because it wasn't properly glorified in his other books, because it, it wasn't so well understood. So Narada Muni came and instructed Vyasadeva, you know, you have to write another book. So that was the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that was the mature contribution. So it said in the Kali Yuga, the supplements to the Vedas are more important than the Vedas. The Vedas, traditionally Vedas can only be recited by the Brahmanas. But the supplements to the Vedas, they're for everyone. And, and the supplements of the Vedas give more knowledge than what you get from the Vedas. So we don't just accept the four Vedas. There's a verse, it says, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatriki Vidimbinam Aikanti Urpataya Vakalpate. That any knowledge which is not according to the Shruti and the Smriti and the Puranas and the Pancharatriki and the Itihasas, if our activities are not supported by these scriptures, then it is simply a disturbance to society. So what we're doing has to be supported with Vedic evidence. So that's a statement from the scriptures. And Rupa Goswami and the Goswamis and Lord Chaitanya, they taught that, that we follow the, all the scriptures, not just the Shruti. You know, you've, as I said, the Gyanis and the Vedantas and they only want the Shruti. But we don't just, we say Shruti, the Smriti, the Puranas, the Pancharatriki, all of these scriptures are all important. They're all saying the same thing. They're all telling the absolute truth in one way or another. So the conclusions of all the scriptures is the same, but it has to be understood. And it's not always understood. You have to be guided. That's why we have to be guided by the acharyas. Sometimes the people read from the scriptures and they say, oh, there's contradictions. Oh, this is, oh, this says that, and that says this, you know. And all these contradictions are bewildering for people. And that causes people to then give up the scriptures. They say, oh, it's, it's too confusing. It's so, so many contradictions. And then some people say, it's, oh, it's just imagination. It's not really true. These are just stories. They say, it's not really true. It's like they say, there's not really five Pandavas, and there's not really Krishna. It's just stories. So they say like that, because they can't understand. They don't understand properly. And so it's too difficult for them to understand. They don't hear from the proper authorities. They don't get the proper guidance, so they get lost, and then they give up, they go away, <laughs> confused. So we're trying to explain everything, make everything clear, understandable. Yeah? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have one more question. Um, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says amongst the Vedas, he's the Sama Veda, right? Uh, why does he say that? Oh, well, what, uh, Prabhupada comments on that in the Bhagavad Gita, isn't it? Prabhupada says something about that in the Bhagavad Gita, in his purport. He said, why, why Krishna picks the Sama, the Sama Veda? The, the one particular Veda is considered more pleasing to Lord Krishna. Yeah. If you look there in the purport, you'll see there, Prabhupada mentions. I can't remember exactly what's the explanation. Okay, I'll check Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna.
Okay. Have we got any more questions, Archana? <laughs> Archana, are you there? I think no more Guru Maharaj. I can't see anyone. Did you want to translate these discussions? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. ก็คือบทสรุปนะคะแบบคร่าวๆไปก็คือสรุปถึงการที่พูดถึงเอ่อหลักพระเวทมาก็คือจุดมุ่งหมายของสรุปแล้วเนี่ยก็คือพระเว